What's going on? In this video, I'm going to share my installation of the Rexen V1P third generation dual dash cam. Although most of what I will cover will be applicable to any dash cam model. This install will be in my 2017 WRX. I will cover camera placement considerations, cable routing, and testing and hardwiring the camera to the fuse box. Let's get started. Okay, so the biggest decision you'll have to make in this whole installation is probably the placement of the camera. Where are you going to place it? So you obviously want the camera to have as much field of view as possible from the perspective of the driver. You really want the camera up high. You can't really place it low because you're going to be cutting out a big portion of the road. Not only that, but you also want the camera behind the windshield in a spot covered by the wipers. If you don't do that, the lens may sit behind a spot on the windshield that gets dirty when it rains, when it snows. The view of the lens will be impeded. You won't have the best footage possible so in this car that leaves that entire area over there unavailable and then of course we have the rear view mirror here and behind it you have this anti-glare mesh obviously that's not gonna be a good spot to place it so that basically leaves the area behind the rear view mirror and all of this area right here as available spots so you have to weigh your options I'm gonna probably be using a lot of this footage for my YouTube videos so I want it to have a centered view of the road it's probably better to have a center view of the road anyway so you get equal coverage on both sides of the road so the only spot that's adequate for me in this car is going to be right here behind the rear view mirror right in this spot the rear view mirror right here has this little cable management tray so you can pull it down right here and pinch it down here and you can pull this out so that's a perfect little tray to house both of my cables the power cable and the cable for the rear view camera just be sure that you have enough room to the right to pull the camera out if you need to and put it back and make sure that you have access on the right side to pull out the SD card and to plug in the power for the camera itself. So now that I found the spot right there, I'm gonna go ahead and permanently mount that right there and move on with my installation. What I have here is just a damp cloth with a little bit of soap. I really want to make sure that if there's any contaminants right there that I get them out, you know, maybe overspray from Armor All or some other protectant. So I just want to make sure that it's fully clean. I know that I'm going to want it right about there, just to the right of the tape. So after taping that and installing it where I just showed you, I decided I didn't like that location anymore. I went outside the car and I think it was hanging down a little bit too low for my taste. It wasn't discreet enough for me. And although most of it was hidden behind the rear view mirror from the perspective of the driver, it was sticking out just enough to be distracting to me. So what I did is I moved it over to the right on the other side of the mirror right here now i didn't want to install this on the anti-glare mesh back here that's this thing right here with the little dots but it is what it is i ended up installing it there anyways i cleaned it very well with soap and water like i just showed you and then some alcohol and the 3m adhesive seems to be sticking very well to that material right there obviously you can install the lens of the camera on that mesh itself so you definitely want the lens of the camera to be below that anti-glare mesh right there so where i placed it right there is basically the highest point that it can go with the lens still having a clear view of the road this spot also comes with the benefits of me being able to just kind of peek underneath like this if i need to verify that the camera is on although the camera does have an audible indication that it's on also i can easily reach on the side of the camera right there to get the sd card out so i'm not concerned about that either another thing i want to mention is if you have an auto dimming mirror like i do right here the mirror has two sensors it has one right here to read the headlights from the cars behind you and it has one in the front right here to read the ambient light in my case the ambient light sensor is directly behind the camera so I was afraid that it would affect it but it does not affect it at all I've already tested it it does not affect the operation of the mirror okay so now I want to show you the wiring of the camera depending on which model you got you may have one or two cables to contend with in my case since I have the rear camera also minus a dual system then I also have this cable right here which is the cable for the rear camera and then this one right here is the cable that gets routed to the fuse box now if you weren't hardwiring the camera to your fuse box then this would be the cable that goes to the 12 volt socket on your console but I'm hardwiring it so this cable for me is going to go to the fuse box because the fuse box is on the driver's side I'm going to be routing my cables to the left so all I did here is I used the existing cable management tray for the rear view mirror and I tucked in both of those cables in that tray so the cables are completely hidden from view and then 
all I simply did was tuck them in underneath the headliner right here all the way down so in order to complete this installation we have to remove this trim right here first thing we have to do is we have to remove the tweeter cover right here so Alright, so that's the first step. What we have to do now is we have to remove the pillar, right? Now we can pull it out. There's definitely a big trick right here. If when you pull this out, it's only gonna pull out about an inch or so. And that's because there's a latch right here and that latch holds the pillar in place in the event that the airbags deploy. So when you pull it out, as soon as you hear it snap, stop pulling, otherwise you can break it. So I'll show you what that looks like. Just stick your fingers in there, just like that, and then just pull it out. All right, that's gonna be enough. It's gonna hold right there, and that's because of this yellow latch right there. You can see it right there. That latch is holding it in place. You can't pull that latch out. All right, so there's a trick to it. All you have to do is it's take your hand and reach from the other side and turn the latch 90 degrees, just like you see me doing right here, okay? Once the latch is 90 degrees, it'll pop off, and then you can just pull out the panel. When you get to this point right here, you're gonna have a decision to make. In my case, I'm installing the dash cam that has the front facing camera as well as a rear facing camera. If you're not installing the rear facing camera, then you can disregard all of this talk about the rear facing camera cable. But if you are installing it, when you get to this point right here, you're gonna have a decision to make. Obviously this right here is your airbag. You do not wanna impede the function of the airbag in any way because you can create a very unsafe situation. You have to decide in which direction that cable is gonna go for your rear camera. You can route the cable through the headliner this way all the way to the back right there or you can route the cable down the pillar and then of course through the floorboards all the way back if you have this car and this camera then the cable reaches in the wrx the 2015 plus wrx now if you're doing this installation in a different car you might want to measure because i only had about a foot to spare and depending on where you actually place the camera then it might actually not reach at all so you really have to be careful and measure twice and as they say cut once to put it through the headliner you have to resist the temptation to just tuck it in here because you can physically you can tuck it in there but you would be creating a very unsafe situation because you would cross the airbag so if your airbag was to deploy you would impede the function of the airbag so obviously you can't do it that way you have to drop the headliner just enough so that you know where you're placing that cable and so that you can secure the cable properly i decided i didn't want to do that plus the cable reached so all i did was i took both cables and i zip tied it all the way down to that existing cable right there. So I know that my cables do not impede the function of the airbag in any way. When you drop the cable from the top, you'll be able to easily see the cable. You'll have to maneuver your hands in there and pull the cable down and then secure the cable. That cable that you see right there, that cable right there, that's the hard wiring power cable. And then this cable you see right there, that's the cable for the rear view camera. So obviously, as you can see, the power cable right there, it's just ran to the front and I'm about to show you that right there. So I went ahead and routed the wiring kit to the fuse panel inside the passenger compartment. That's that panel right there. And here's the wiring kit right here. This is the wire. And of course we have our 12 volt power supply and we have our ground. It should be that straightforward, but there's some very important things that we have to keep in mind. So in order to do this right, you're gonna need a few things. If you have this exact car, then you can just follow my instructions. But if you don't have this exact car, then you're gonna need a multimeter to do your own test in your own particular car. So here we have the cable, right? Now I do think that this cable suffers from a few design flaws. First of all, this fuse right here, you can't change out. It's hardwired into the cable. So if this fuse was to pop, then you wouldn't be able to change it out. You'd have to literally cut this and figure out a different arrangement. It would have been better to have that fuse removable. Another reason why I think this cable is flawed is because the fuse is at the very end of the 12 volt line. It's not in line, it's at the very end of it. That's important because power, in order for the fuse to be effective, has to go from this lead through the fuse element to this lead and out that way. The problem is that in a normal fuse box, right, one leg has power coming from the battery, 12 volts coming from the battery, and the other leg of the fuse goes out to whatever component that particular fuse powers. What this means to you is that if you just take this right here and plug it into a spot in the fuse box, 
you stand a 50% chance of plugging in right and a 50% chance of not protecting the camera at all. And you will never know because the camera will turn on and you'll have no idea that the camera is not being protected by the fuse. Another important thing we have to talk about is this is a 15 amp fuse, right? As you can see in this particular fuse box right here, there's several spots that are empty, which is great. That's where our 15 amp fuse is gonna go. Alternatively, you could take and put it in on a spot that already has a 15 amp fuse. You can see those because those are the blue ones. If it's a, a circuit that's not that important, for example, like heated seats is a 15 amp circuit. So I wouldn't have a problem popping out the 15 amp fuse from the heated seats and popping this in because the camera doesn't really have that much load. So it's not really gonna affect it at all. But ideally we wanna pick a spot that's empty. And here you can see I have four. I'm gonna do two tests. I'm gonna test to see which lead is hot and which is not. And I'm also gonna test to see if it's always on or if it's switched. That's super important because if it's always on, the camera is never gonna turn off. So what I want it to do is I want it to be a fused outlet that turns on when the ignition switch is on accessory or the car is on and it shuts off when the car is off. That way the camera will turn on and off automatically. That being said, if you're interested in powering the camera all the time so that you can turn it on and off at will, say you're at a parking lot or something like that and you want to keep the camera on, then you got to make sure you plug this into a fuse spot that stays on all the time. So like I said, I have four spots here. So I'm gonna pick a spot at random. I'm gonna pick this spot right here. And the first thing I wanna test is to see if the power is always on to that fuse or if it's switched with the ignition switch with the key, right? The way that I'm gonna do that is I have the spare fuse right here that I'm just gonna use to help me out with this. You don't have to do this. This just makes it easier because my particular multimeter, the leads, don't really fit in there right. So I'm just improvising a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice this fuse right here. And all I'm doing is using diagonal cutters to cut the end off right there and expose the bare metal in the back right here so I can easily test it. So there we go. So now you can see the metal right there so I can easily put the leads to that metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this in that spot that I'm interested in testing. There you go. So now you can see right there that the leads are exposed right there. So now I can easily take my multimeter and test it. Since we're measuring 12 volts DC, which is what we're expecting from the battery, I'm gonna go ahead and set my selector here to 20 volts DC, which is just the scale. Since we're expecting 12, 20 volts would work just fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not going from lead to lead on that fuse. I'm gonna take my black lead and I'm gonna go to ground right here and hold it. Right now the car is off, the key is out of the ignition. So I wanna test if either of those leads has 12 volts. So I'm gonna go to the top one. Okay, I got nothing and I'm gonna go to the bottom and I got nothing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stick the key in the ignition and I'm gonna put it on accessory and see if either of those leads come alive. So I'm gonna do the same thing. First, I'm gonna go to the top one. I got nothing. Then I'm gonna go to the bottom one. There it is. Okay, perfect. So that tells me that that empty spot right there would work perfectly for what I need because it has no power when the car is off and when the car is on accessory or on, it has 12 volts. So that's the one I need, that's the one I'm gonna use. Furthermore, what this test tells me, since the bottom is the lead that's hot on that fuse spot, now I know that I have to install this fuse with a cable up. That way, the 12 volts comes in through this lead right here, through the fuse element and onto the camera. If I installed it like this, upside down with a cable down, then the camera would still get 12 volts. Obviously the bottom lead will go out to the camera, but it wouldn't go through the fuse element. So you would be negating the fuse altogether. Not all of them have the power on the bottom. Some of them have it on the top. You have to test it to see. So if you have this exact car, you can go ahead and use that spot that I'm using right there, which is spot 23, and you can use this hardwiring kit with the cable up, just like that on there. And now that leaves us with the ground. Here we have basically the completed installation. The ground cable right here, well, there's a convenient bolt right there. Even though it looks like it's going through plastic, it's actually connected to that metal bracket behind there. So it's an adequate and very convenient spot to place the ground. So that's what I used right there. In this car, you're gonna have a lot of excess cable. And you can see one big loop right here and all I did was zip tie it to this existing cable right there. And then behind it, you can see the 12 to five volt converter for the camera right there, which I also zip tied to another cable back there. You wanna make sure that you secure all of your excess cable to not only prevent rattles, but also prevent any unsafe situation from loose cables. 
Okay, so for those of you who are installing that rear view camera like I am, let me show you what I did for my own installation. So as I said, I routed the cable down here. It's behind this kick plate and I just zip tied it to an existing cable and then it goes down this floorboard right here on its way to the back. Now this piece of trim right here, you don't have to pull it out all the way. All you have to do is pop it out just enough to be able to tuck in the cable behind it and then zip tie the cable on this side and then again on the other side. Now I'll link in the description to a video where I'll go over how to remove all of this trim if you're interested. So once you get to this point, I remove this trim right here so I can show you where the cable is. The cable is right here. You can see that I zip tied it to this existing cable right there. And this is the point where you have to improvise a little bit and let me show you what I'm talking about. Here you can see the cable right there. All right, there isn't an existing cable in the car that goes up through that trim and up to where we need that cable to be up here. So th that's what I mean by having to improvise. So what I did, I took the cable right there and I zip tied it to this cable right here, okay? Then again, I zip tied it to this bracket right here and I put some foam behind it to prevent chafing. And then this is your seatbelt mechanism, okay? You don't want to impede the function of that mechanism. So what I did, I hope you see it right there, is I put the cable behind it, all right? And it comes up and out right here in this spot. So as you can see right there, I put a zip tie around this metal bracket right here and around the cable. And then I also put some foam around it, basically wedging the cable right there in that corner. So it's not gonna go anywhere. And of course the cable, you can see it run up right there. And I put some foam behind the cable to prevent rattles. And I know it's common sense, but I have to say it, don't put that cable over the airbag. This is the airbag right here that I was talking to you about earlier. It runs all the way down. That's why I think that it's probably easier to do it the way that I'm showing you rather than going through the headliner because of these airbags. I didn't want to mess with them. I don't want to create unsafe situations. So make sure you tuck in the cable behind the airbag like I did right there. And then the cable comes up right here. Then I zip tied it to that point right there. And then again, back here. And then after that, a smooth sailing, because all you have to do is tuck in the cable behind the headliner right here, all the way to the camera. This trim, it just pulls out. There's no trick to it. It's just held in place by some clips, and it just pulls right out. This trim right here, same thing. You don't have to pull it out all the way. All you have to do is pull this rubber from the edge, just like that, and then pop it out just enough to be able to reach behind it, and then do the reverse to put it back. So this was a basic installation of a dual dash cam system. In the future, I'm gonna be adding battery discharge prevention for parking mode. I'll also get the GPS module for it and figure out how to add a circular polarizer to reduce glare from the windshield. I'm pretty happy with the camera so far and there's a lot to discuss about it and dash cams in general, but I'm gonna save that for the review video. I hope this video was useful to you and don't forget to give it a like and consider subscribing for more content just like this. Thanks a lot for watching and take care.